When we think about immune therapy for melanoma, our major initial decision is, do we give this patient a single PD-1 drug like pembrolizumab or nivolumab, or do we give this patient a combination of immune therapy drugs, such as the combination of nivolumab with ipilimumab? That's the major decision that we come across. So what goes into our mind in thinking about these two approaches, both single agent PD-1 drugs or the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab? Single agent PD-1 drugs are very, very effective in and of themselves and incredibly well tolerated. So in terms of any single agent approach, PD-1 drugs in the immune therapy class are incredibly effective and are always a reasonable choice for patients. However, when you combine immune therapy drugs like ipilimumab and nivolumab, you do have a higher response rate. So that means more patients are having tumor shrinkage with the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab compared to single agent PD-1 drugs like pembrolizumab or single agent nivolumab. So with ipilimumab and PD-1 combinations, you do get higher response rates, you do get higher proportion of patients with tumor shrinkage. That is an important consideration. However, unfortunately, we don't yet have information on long-term survival rates of patients with the combination approach of ipilimumab and nivolumab compared to single agent PD-1. We really don't know long-term how are we helping patients with combination compared to giving single drugs one at a time. So it's really reasonable to think about, should I give this patient combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab together, or should I give this patient a single PD-1 drug like pembrolizumab or nivolumab alone, and if that doesn't work, then switch that patient to ipilimumab alone or ipilimumab and nivolumab in combination. It's really an ongoing area of research one would say, well, if the combination has higher degree of shrinkage of tumors in patients, higher proportion of patients with shrinkage, yes, we don't know long term how beneficial that really is yet compared to the sequential approach. Why don't we just give the combination to everyone? Well, the reason that we don't is because there are more side effects with the combination, and that's just no surprise. When you combine two drugs together, you get more side effects than when you just give PD-1 alone. Ipilimumab drives more of the side effects within the combination, so we know that that combination, the toxicities are more driven by ipilimumab than PD-1, PD-1 alone, incredibly well tolerated. But sometimes the combination really is justified and the higher frequency of side effects is worth it to ensure that that patient's going to have the best numeric chance of having a response. And trying to tease that out is a really complex question. So we have a lot of experience with combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab, um, and also some experience with a combination of pembrolizumab and ipilimumab, because we were involved in some of the initial clinical trials of actually the initial, we were involved in the initial clinical trials of both of those combinations and therefore have a lot of information as well as long-term follow-up. And in our hands, with the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab, we see 60% of our patients responding exactly as was seen in the 067 and 069 clinical trials. We find that a lot of those responses are very durable with um, progression-free survival at 18 months being 50% and being flat after that. And that even when patients um, have only partial responses, we've been sampling their tumor and finding that there's no viable tumor in those cases and allowing us to stop treatment. And in our patients, the cohort that we've followed for three years, 70% of those are still alive and disease-free and off treatment. Sure, While with monotherapy, uh, uh, with either uh, nivolumab or pembrolizumab, we see a fair amount of activity and it's certainly well tolerated, but the data seems to suggest that the plateau on the survival curves are going to be in the 30 to 40 percent range. So there's a difference that's as much as 20 to 30 percent plateau on those survival curves. And we look at that and say that that's a real difference. That's two to three out of 10 patients who are living disease-free and treatment-free from the combination 
compared to the single agent. And we think even though the combination has considerably more toxicity, that um, difference in the potential cure rate is far worth that extra toxicity because every patient who's not on that tail of the survival curve is dead. And I think it's much easier to treat toxicity from treatment than it is to treat melanoma that is unresponsive to therapy. And as yet, we have no data whether we can actually salvage patients who start with anti-PD-1 therapy with combination therapy administered afterwards.